The gaming industry is forecasted to reach $455 billion in 2024. It is a massive industry that has been growing steadily over the years and has offered employment to millions, if not billions, of people. To put it into perspective, the gaming industry is as big as the movie and music ones combined. Still, despite the big money it's making, many gaming developers and publishers have found themselves in deep financial trouble in past years. Some video game companies were forced to shut down, others were saved by acquisitions, and then there are the lucky few who had bet their last bit of capital on one game, and that game ended up saving them. I'm Josh, and welcome to Hotfix Gaming. Today we're looking at 9 video games that have managed the incredible feat of saving their studios from bankruptcy. 9. Mahjong Gakuen Capcom is behind some beloved and popular video game franchises, such as Street Fighter and Resident Evil, but believe it or not, neither of these two series would even exist today if it weren't for the adult-themed Mahjong game called Mahjong Gakuen. Both artist Akira Akiman Yasuda and former producer Yoshiki Okamoto, who is the lead developer on the project, have confirmed that this is in fact true. According to these various accounts, Capcom was facing bankruptcy towards the end of the 80s, when Okamoto decided to secretly start developing a strip version of Mahjong. When it was finished, Capcom's president Kenzo Tsuchimoto refused to release it under the company's banner, with the explicit title eventually being distributed under another publisher named Yuga instead. As Akiman states, this game sold tremendously well for the company. So well, in fact, it outsold Capcom's Ghouls and Ghosts, which was originally released in 1988. Okamoto even credits it with saving the company from its financial crisis, proving that yes, sex does indeed sell. Number 8. Dead or Alive We know what you're thinking. When was Team Ninja ever in financial trouble? Well, in the case of this game, its developers were doing okay. It was actually the publisher that was suffering. Tecmo, the publisher of Dead or Alive series, had already made a name for itself in the gaming industry, with releases such as Ninja Gaiden, Tecmo Bowl, and the Japanese-only title, Tsupari Otsumo. But despite these iconic titles of the time, the company still struggled and had a significant amount of debt. Tomonobu Itagaki was at the time part of the group of game designers who worked at Tecmo, and he was tasked to create a game similar to Sega's Virtua Fighter which was the very popular series in the mid-90s. The Dead or Alive game series was named that because Tecmo was in financial trouble and the first game would more or less decide between the life or death of the company. And it ended up being a huge success. 7. Ori and the Blind Forest The series comprising of Ori and the Blind Forest and Ori and the Will of the Wisps has sold approximately 10 million copies globally making it one of the most successful Metroidvania series of all time. But Moon Studios wouldn't be in the industry today if it weren't for this game's commercial success. Moon Studios, co-founded by Thomas Mahler and Gennady Coral in 2010, initially developed several prototypes. One of these, a platformer called Zine, impressed Microsoft, which agreed to fund it. Sign evolved into Ori and the Blind Forest, a Metroidvania released in March 2015, achieving critical acclaim and becoming profitable for both Microsoft and Moon Studios within weeks. The success of Blind Forest not only allowed the studio to stay afloat, but it also enabled them to expand and develop a sequel, Ori and the Will of the Wisps, released in March 2020, received even greater acclaim and is considered one of the best Metroidvanias. 6. Pillars of Eternity Obsidian Entertainment's most well-known games are the titles such as Star Wars Knights of the Old Republic 2 or South Park The Stick of Truth, and yet it was the lesser-known Pillars of Eternity that got them out of financial trouble. In September of 2012, when the Kickstarter campaign detailing Obsidian's newest project went live, nobody thought it was going to take off, but in just over 24 hours it had completed its objective of $1.1 million. Five days later, funding for Pillars of Eternity surpassed $1.6 million, effectively saving Obsidian from bankruptcy. 5. Nier Automata In early 2017, things weren't looking great for Platinum. Their big-budget AAA game Scalebound that was initially announced as an Xbox exclusive just got cancelled, and its other recent games like Star Fox Zero and Teenage Mutant Ninja Turtles Mutants in Manhattan weren't doing that great either. The company was in serious trouble, but that same year, 2017, one of the biggest surprises came around, 
The launch of Nier Automata, a joint effort between Platinum Games, series director Yoko Taro, and Square Enix. While its predecessor underperformed, Automata had quickly become a hit among critics and fans alike. Positive review scores and strong word of mouth helped the game continue to sell well even when facing against strong competition from games like Horizon Zero Dawn at the launch of Nintendo Switch. And, as co-founder of Platinum Games, Hideki Kamiya has said in a tweet back then, Automata saved the company from bankruptcy. Number 4. Dishonored In 2010, Arcane Studios' contract work was started to run down, and the studio was preparing to let go of staff in order to diminish their costs. Surprisingly, it was then when Bethesda Softworks approached them with the idea of a stealth-based game that was set in feudal Japan, which they wanted to name Dishonored. Arcane Studios started working under contract for a few months before they were fully acquired by Zenimax Media, Bethesda's parent company. With financial backing and a parent company that appreciated good game design, Arcane had the time and creative freedom to revamp Bethesda's original concept for Dishonored and moved the setting from Japan to one inspired by London while retaining the Dishonored name and stealth aspects. Unfortunately, this was not enough. As of May of 2024, Microsoft closed this studio down along with other beloved studios. 3. Pokemon Before making video games, Game Freak used to be a video game magazine. But one day, one of its co-founders, Satoshi Tajiri, came up with the idea of a video game that would feature collectible and tradable battling monsters. He pitched that idea to Nintendo under the name Capsule Monsters. Nintendo initially rejected the idea, so Tajari went back to the drawing board and returned with Pocket Monsters. Once Nintendo greenlit the game for development, Game Freak went to work. However, the development of the first ever Pokemon game was hard. It took six years and nearly bankrupted Game Freak. Luckily, Pokemon Red and Green versions, which were released in 1996, proved to be a hit and saved the company from financial ruin. 2. The Elder Scrolls III Morrowind there was a time when Bethesda wasn't the massive and successful game design company that it is today, which is crazy to imagine, from the makers of the Elder Scrolls and Fallout franchise. However, after the release of Elder Scrolls II Daggerfall, the company was in financial trouble. That title didn't do so great, and all the other projects they developed were not doing successes either. So when Bethesda finally got to making Elder Scrolls III Morrowind, there was only six people left in the studio and they decided to go all in on the production of this game. And that effort paid off. The game had sold over 4 million copies in just its first three years, ultimately saving Bethesda from closing up. Number 1. Final Fantasy There are plenty of rumors about why the game has been named Final Fantasy. Some say it was because Square was in financial trouble and wanted to try and make it with one last game, hence the final in its title. However, other gamers will say that the final portion of the title was chosen because Hironobu Sakaguchi, the game designer and director, was going to quit the gaming industry if the first Final Fantasy wasn't a success. But that is simply not the truth either. Sakaguchi has explained in an interview that they initially wanted to name the game Fighting Fantasy, but had to change it when they discovered that there was a board game with that same name, as well as a series of British game books. So with that clarified, let's get to what was happening before the first Final Fantasy got released into the world. Before it was called Square Enix, Square was going through a rough period in 1987. It got so bad that before declaring bankruptcy, the company decided that Final Fantasy will be their swan song. It was the developing team's best effort before being forced to declare bankruptcy. They wanted to leave players with something worthwhile. I guess it's safe to assume that no one believed that Final Fantasy would become so popular. Today, the franchise has 16 mainline games released and a devoted fan base that cannot imagine how close it was to all of this never existing. Do you know of other examples of games that saved their companies from financial ruin? Let us know in the comments section below. And if you love gaming and want more content, why not check out our other videos? Two of them are already linked on screen, ready for you to enjoy.